I'm almost certain, but tell me, who told you to come to this barber shop? Let me tell you a little secret about my first wife, sonny boy. When I met that woman, she had no manners, no money, no Who in the hell? Boy, this man sure loves to listen to himself talk. Find him. My God, if it ain't the hero of the day. I gotta figure out what's going on here as to who sent me, supposedly. Uh, can I get close up here? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Nothing says Texan like a cowboy hat. Cowboy hat, okay. That's cool. We already know he's probably a hardcore Republican that owns a good 20 different guns. With this and that hat, I'll really look the part. Okay, so it's not about looking the part per se, it's more like making sure I have the I'll correct info. Come on, I hate this. Come on, navigate. There you go. It's not going to be easy to sound Texan, but I'll give it my best shot. Okay, another visual clue. <laughs> what is it, though? The hand? Yes, That's sir. Okay. New York City. I probably don't need to imitate his gestures during the game, but it certainly wouldn't hurt to try. Turn up. I'm fixed. <laughs> Knowing Farnham, the owner of this bra only came here for business. Boxing at the Grand Old Opry? Anyway, Kenny, thanks for fixing the game with Cassidy. Kenny. <laughs> God bless you, brother. <laughs> so his friend's name's Kenny. Craziest goddamn Texan in New York. My good old friend Kenny, craziest goddamn Texan in New York. You know how many Kennys there are in New York? Damn, I gotta Kenny. be specific. Nights, when and where the game will be, the password, and the money Farnham dished out. What else do I need? Bro, let me move. Hurry up. How am I supposed to figure out who Kenny is? Ding dong. Interesting name for a town. That's not it, though, is it? Who is Kenny? Who is Kenny? Who's Kenny's... What's Kenny's last name? Do I know? Should I know? Should I care? What about the closet? Ooh, a gun. Nice. Luckily, there was only one Kenny in Farnham's address book. Kenny Eeks, residing at... Where does he live? Cornell Platt, Manhattan. Stunning penthouse. I'm not surprised. Mr. Eeks has excellent taste. Do you happen to know what he asked for the last time he was here? Shit! I gotta figure that out, too. I really gotta figure out what Kenny asks for. Is that a briefcase I can look through? No matter I hope how so. superficial someone may seem, there's always a way to win their heart. Shit, I don't even know. Can I leave? Why am I stuck in this closet? I can't even move. Oh, now I can move, but time's up now, huh? Oh, thank goodness. He's here just Don't in time. Don't tell me, Billy Bob. This here is my new friend, Father. Am I right? Sure enough, your barber was fixing to give me a shave. 
<laughs> you can get a good shave at another time. Billy Bob is always at our beck and call. Of course. Hey, come on. Let's get in there before they finish all the bourbon without us. Yes. I haven't frisked him yet, sir. I don't think that'll be necessary. Mr. Farnham here, he's an honest Texan. And I'm sure he'll hand over his weapon if we ask him to. Right. Sure, but you better take good care of my girl. There you go. It'll be my pleasure. I'm just glad I didn't get cut. Welcome, I thought... gentlemen. Chips on I... the table and guns are in the safe. Now, we got I I was a lovely just close to getting poker shame. ahead of us full of smoking and bourbon. So let's get started. Take a seat, Mr. Farnham. Let me introduce you. To my right, wearing gray boxes and weighing in at 140 pounds, the owner of Pink Vice, the largest meat market in all of Manhattan. In other words, a real son of a bitch. Damn. No offense to the women he exploits. Our you really went in, huh? Oswald Quince. A title I aim to keep, provided our new contender here doesn't interfere. Y'all are dealing with the worst player in Texas. You're just trying to make me overconfident, aren't you? The truth Maybe. is that our friend Farnham owns the largest and, I dare say, most entertaining establishment in Texas. Really? So we're colleagues, then? Yeah, you wish, Quince. He owns a casino. Damn. And it's not even in Austin or Dallas. It's actually in a little town called, uh, uh, yeah, what was it? Darn it, I, I looked it up the other day. It had a funny ring to it. I, I hate it when this happens. I thought they moved all Texan casinos to Vegas. Well, gambling is legal. You mean Ding Dong, Texas? <laughs> Good thing I remember ding that shit. Dong. Yo, I just noticed That's he it. literally has a gun. <laughs> Sitting in the corner with a gun. <laughs> One false move and I'm we'll just done. Like I gotta that. be careful at this point. This is getting really well, intense. Well, casino or no casino, let's just hope he doesn't keep as many aces up I wonder if this bird Miglia, huh? realizes Amen. I'm not the person life. everyone Wearing thinks I am. boxes and weighing in at 396 pounds. Frank, show some respect, huh? The hospitality tycoon, Polly. Polly, no. Tycoon? I just own a small bar with pool tables. Clients drink close to nothing and play even less, but certain business transactions just couldn't happen anywhere else. Damn it, Polly. Why don't I know your last name? Because they took it away from me. You have no idea how good my ex-wife's lawyer is. <laughs> Women, they even take our damn names. <laughs> you're too much, Polly. When you're done sightseeing, why don't you drop by La Iguana for a game of pool, and I'll buy you a drink. But I have to warn you, my clientele isn't crazy about furry fellas such as yourself. Damn, that's a dib. Thanks. I love me some pool. Perfect. It'll be my pleasure. You're looking to start your own pool business, Farnham? And he this gives me matches. This is cute. This guy here association in Texas. And guess who he's turning to for advice? To be cool. honest, several things got me worried. So I'd be much obliged for any counseling. So, what worries you? Um, uh, what about this one? Rebel coaches like Joe Dunn. Oh, I see you've done your homework. That bastard wouldn't accept the most basic rules. For example, banning boxes from official competitions when the managers don't belong to my association. Hey, don't get me wrong. I'm sorry for his death. But if they ever find the murderer, I'd be glad to pay his lawyer fees. Billy Bob, bring out the bird. Wow, he I'll ain't deal. shit With for respect, that. Of I can tell we he really hated Joe Dunn. 
poker is as boring as it is simple. All you need to do is read people's faces. And even the worst detective has that trick up his sleeve. The okay, real issue but... is knowing what to play for when there's much more than just money at stake. Shit. Please don't play to win. Damn it. What again? How many games have you won, Farnham? The worst player in Texas, huh? Hey, Quint, you better start unbuckling that championship belt. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't over yet. Mark my words. Farnham will be calling his wife before the night is over. Ha! Oh, hey, 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 by the way, did you guys hear about Kenny's wife? Pretty tragic, huh? What happened? Oh, plain bad luck. Hey, but Farnham, I'm, I'm sure you know more about it than I do. Yo, they gossip way more than a group of women at a hair salon. Anyway, Kenny, thanks for fixing the game with Cassidy. <laughs> okay, but what happened with Kenny's God wife, you, though? Brother. <laughs> what happened with Kenny's wife? Tell Damn. How am I supposed to figure this out? Craziest goddamn Texan in New York. And the poor fella's already got enough on his hands now that his wife. Women just gotta have their vices. Their... Well, she's in a rehab clinic now, Ooh. hooked on a tranquilizer. Damn, she's a druggie. That's it, tranquilizer. Don't tell me women don't have their vices, too. Bring out the bourbon, Billy Bob. Come on. Come on, give me, give me the bourbon. Maybe I spoke I'm just... too soon when I said that poker is easy for a good detective. Let's just say it's relatively simple. There's always someone ready to surprise you, relatively speaking. I'm just glad I don't need to pick oh, cards because I really don't know how to play poker. This. What happened, Farnham? Beginner's luck doesn't last forever. And that's when the real champ comes in. I hope you're ready to lose it all, my friend. <laughs> Poor Farnham. Came looking to make big bucks in the city with his boxing, and he's gonna lose it all with poker. <laughs> I hope your counseling will make up for it. Yeah, so how can I be of help? Okay, what about... Homicidal boxers like Bobby Yale. Ha! <laughs> That's some piece of news, huh? Hey, I don't know if he did it, but the real problem is that the fight against my champ Stone might not even freaking happen. The good news is that I've almost convinced the governor to let him out of prison on the day of the fight. Under a police escort, that is. I bet you the audience gets a kick out of that. That's dumb. Wow. They, they really want this fight to go. Those their athletes hooking up with each other. Like Al Stone and Helen Moore. I see you subscribe to What's News. Yeah, my star boxer. The reigning champion. He's having an affair with America's sweetheart. Hey, I got nothing against those two idiots falling in love. Don't get me wrong, but it's taking a toll on his performance. I don't think he'll lose against Yale, but I'm starting to worry a bit. Come on, come on! Let's steal another hand before Quince accuses us of trying to break his winning streak. Ain't gonna happen. Gentlemen, I suggest you never tell your sons about this game unless you want to lose their respect. Wait, you mean our sons actually respect us? <laughs> I hear you. There's no way to set boys straight these days. They don't even respond to a good old beating. What the hell type of... I dare say Texan boys do respond to a good beating. Hey, careful, Quince. You're talking to a pro. So, uh, Kenny told me you had quite a house full. How many kids you got in that house full of yours? Oh, Lord. All right, let's try and remember. No. That son of a bitch was about to choke on his own vomit. If I'd been a communist, perhaps the vision of a millionaire choking on his own vomit would have made my day. Even so, 
I doubt I could have just stood there and watched him die. Shit! Unfortunately, I didn't break a sweat trying to save him. So, se murió. Fuck. Let's retry again. How many kids you got in that house full of yours? Uh, well, I bet he doesn't believe in condoms, so I really think he has a whole bunch, but let's... No. Let's get that some confirmation first. was about to choke on his own vomit. If I'd been a communist, perhaps the vision of a millionaire choking on his own vomit would have made my day. Even so, I doubt I could have just stood there and watched him die. Come on, you fat ass. Damn! Come on! Come on. Woo! No. Deserving or not, the man would live. I know that was some workout, man. My biceps. My triceps. How many kids? I need to know. Uh. Six. One, two, three. Six wanted something. I don't know how you deal with all of them. All boys. Does it have to be now? Oh, never let Quince near one of your daughters. What Come is that on, supposed to mean? Is he that much of a creep? Children are <gasps> Child prostitution! I a finger on him until they're 12. That's After disgusting. That, well. <laughs> I'll so punch you in your fucking face. That's nasty. Some men have needs that uh, can only be met by a young girl that age. No, the fuck, if you yo. Know what I you're a uh, child you're right, molester. Fine. If you laid those dirty hands on one of my girls, I'd kill you myself. That's right. That's right, dead ass. Now, what if that lovely 12 year old girl was your sweet little niece? Or yeah. my cousin Mike's niece. And what if she disappeared a while back? And what if she'd been taken to work uptown? In a brothel, huh? Huh? What do you think about that? Yeah, what do you think, I don't asshole? Know what you're talking about, Frank? You're disgusting. Don't you dare call me Frank. Billy Bob. Y'all gonna shoot him? It's 500 more. <laughs> For washing up. It's a deal. Kill him. <laughs> yes! Yes! This is nice. Sorry for the spectacle, fellas. I, uh, I had no idea the game would end like this. Please, uh, take my tokens, and that flying scumbag's tokens as well. Now I feel, excuse me, I have some family matters to attend to. If you decide to go ahead with your new venture, call me Farnham. You the see... Of last night's game was utterly insulting. Never contact me again, or I'll put an end to your pathetic life. If our common acquaintance should ask you about your business matters, tell him that boxing is too violent for you. Sign Frank Cassidy. Huh. All in day's work. You're taking the gun? Oh. My own tracks would be covered the following morning when Cassidy read this note from Farnham. Dear Mr. Cassidy, though I'm grateful for your kind help, last night's game made me realize that boxing is just too violent for a peaceful Texan like myself. I have decided to invest elsewhere. Yours sincerely, Howard M. Farnham II. Oh, he dumb mad. He's pissed. Damn Texans. <sighs> 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 
Is that Blackstad's family? Oh, it is. He's getting PTSD. I can me, feel it. It was the first time in days that I had gone to bed without my dad. Nothing like a bruised body to help you to sleep like a baby. I'm glad I did that. He's disgusting. He's so disgusting. Like, dude, he did Maybe child prostitution. That's crazy. I mean, these guys, they're scummy, but at least their morals are high enough where they're against child prostitution. So, at least that's a, a bright side. But I just, I'm concerned about Black Sad, to be honest. I really hope he's not too traumatized by the recent events. I mean, he's having nightmares now, so. Answer the phone, man. It's for you. Black Sad. Finally, I need you at the gym now, please. Oh, Lord. It was like this when I got here. Huh. Did you touch or move anything in here? Only the phone. Good. Calm down. I'll take care of this. Wow, someone was really looking for Had some... Had you already finished looking through these papers? Clues. I wish. Well, I guess you'll enjoy sorting all this again. Damn, Black Sad, you really like being sarcastic, huh? What are you doing? Do you like sardines? Excuse me? Do you like sardines? Ugh. Clearly not, so... Yep. So what, the burglar was robbing and he got hungry? And they had sardines in the middle of robbing or something? I don't know. All right, let me look through these clues. O'Leary is threatening Stone with ruining Moore's career. O'Leary bet 5,000 on Yale. Who do the footprints at the gym belong to? O'Leary's feet on the table, a sign of dominance. Helen Moore carries a cigarette case bearing a romantic inscription. O'Leary keeps romantic pictures of Helen Moore in a drawer. O'Leary always plays it safe. Mary's been at Yale's place recently. Judging by the bits, Stone is a clear favorite against Yale. How about this with that? <gasps> no, the footprints don't match. Or if O'Leary killed Dunn, he did it without stepping in the paint or in different shoes. Uh, they don't match. Well, let's try again. A new deduction. Uh, let me see. Wait a minute. How about this? O'Leary. No. Okay, that does not match. Wait, 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 wait. How about this one? That with this one. Ooh. It's pretty clear that Helen Moore's cigarette case was a gift from O'Leary. Aww, they're still in love. That's so cute. Oh, another deduction. Let's go. Third time's the charm. Okay, let me see. Wait, Helen Moore says she hates O'Leary? What? Yeah, they're clearly in love. So it wouldn't make sense for her to say she hates him. Unless she's lying. If she's still in love, why does she claim she hates him? Yeah. What is she hiding? So, no other deductions. Okay. Hmm. 
I'm surprised the money and the last will of testament Looks like is the still burglar there. isn't interested in bureaucracy. Nope. Or Not the that money. I suspected otherwise. But it's obvious they weren't looking for money. Did they take anything? No. Although... When you went in the hospital room to get your purse, did you get the gun as well? Yes. Isn't it there? I put it back. It's I'd not. rather not go through that again. Oh, sh shit. I see. There's a missing gun. <laughs> I am suspicious. Where's the gun? If you placed it back, why is it not there? Hmm? Hmm? Why? Bingo. What is it? Nothing. Just a freshly signed contract. So... Yep. We got his prints now. Oh, another deduction. Fourth time to charm. Let's go. Question is... Huh. What should I... Oh, the Jim Burglar signed a document with his foot. What about... This one? No. Okay, okay. What about this one with this one? <gasps> a third one! Uh... Oh, come on. Okay, okay. Let me try it again. I got the first two correctly, right? No, I... Hold on. Give me a moment. I just wish it was a lot more better to pick the, these statements, you know? Uh... No. No? What the hell? Maybe this one? With this one? No. I, I don't know what to do. Hold on. Okay, so obviously... It's this one, with this one. No, I don't know what to do. Or maybe, hold on, I, I, gotta, I gotta figure this out. I, I am going to figure this out. No. I... I don't know. Come on. This one? I don't know which one to pick. Is there really anything that has to deal with... I don't know. Um... Maybe... This one, and this one. Ooh! O'Leary's bet, 5,000. Judging by the bet stones, a clear favorite against Yale. Maybe this one? Oh! It looks like O'Leary has rigged the fight between Stone and Yale. Wow, interesting, a fixed fight. That's sad. No wonder everyone wants this fight to go on. It's fixed from the start. Thank you for watching. This is Lover of Ladies, and I'll see you next week.